Hello guys and welcome to Mark Shrimp Tanks. Today I'm going to show you an absolutely awesome way to use 3% hydrogen peroxide in a shrimp tank. Okay guys, but before we start, right, what is H2O2? H2O2 is um, hydrogen peroxide, right? It is, an, um, it is a chemical composition that has uh, two hydrogen particles and two oxygen particles, right? And what this does is, uh, when it comes in contact with anything organic, it oxidizes it, right? And the, the absolute wonderful thing about H2O2 is, uh, after the oxidation process is complete, all you are left with is pure water and pure oxygen, right? And we all know the benefits of uh, oxygen in a shrimp tank or any kind of tank, even when you're doing stuff like uh, washing, you're washing your clothes, etc. If you have pure oxygen on things, stains, etc., it cleans them so good. Right, so I'm going to show you guys the ways I've used this. In Before we tank. get started, though, guys, as well, I just want to warn you, right, that if you are not fully competent at doing things like measuring, etc., this video is not for you, right, because the last thing I'd ever want is for someone to do this and then them ending up killing the shrimp, right, because you have to be very, very competent. Your ability is to calculate things and measure things etc before you do this right so please make sure you double check all your measurements i'm going to tell you how to um, measure your tank so you know the volume of the water etc but this is up to you this is on your own chest right so make sure that you do all of these things correctly double check them get someone else to check them as well because i can't emphasize this enough if you do this wrong there's a high risk that you will kill your shrimp but for me personally because I've done this so many times, I've done it in uh, probably all of these tanks and some of them multiple times, like this one I did yesterday. H2O2, what does it actually do in a tank for us that's going to be beneficial for our shrimp, right? Um, just off the top of my head, right, I'm going to go through a list of things I know that it can do for you in your tank, right? So one of the main ones is uh, bacteria reduction. That's my absolute favorite one because uh, once you can reduce the bacteria in your tank, you can add your own types of bacteria back into the tank, right? so you can kind of control uh, the levels of bacteria in your tank and um, any of you guys that I've passed this on to, especially some of you more recently because I know I had quite a few doubters on this one, that it can um, change a tank from being almost dead where your shrimp are lethargic and revigorate the whole tank, right? it is so good guys, you have to believe me, trust me on this, try it, know your calculations and try this, okay? The other things are um, is 202 is um, as because it's an oxidizer as well, it will oxidize the, the surface layers of um, any organic matter, right? And for us, that means things like um, algae in the tank, for example. Um, organisms where the structure of the cells is thinner than other organisms, those cells will oxidize first, right? So you're talking about uh, things like the H2O2 will uh, affect the bacteria first, it will affect the biofilm, it will affect the algae, right? But this is where it's um, a beautiful process because if you pick the correct dosage and concentration you can just affect your tank just enough to get rid of some things but not affect the higher organisms okay so that's how this works um, i also know that this cures uh, green fungus and neocaridina i've had two or three cases of uh, confirmed things that actually work so uh, what else uh, it doesn't harm baby shrimp at all um, issues I've seen people have with this kind of thing before is simply that they dose too much. They're not really sure what they're doing. So uh, the other things I know for sure are uh, that it is quite a good thing to do to basically clean slate your tank. I'll go into that in more detail as well once I've shown you how I do it because proof is in the pudding. You will see the amounts of H2O2 I add to my tank and you will see the effects. Right Now I've done it in all my tanks already guys. So you might not actually see uh, the reinvigoration of your shrimp tanks like I have, but trust me guys, you will have seen a video I put up on uh, last week where I did, um, what video was it now? I think it was Pure Nordic feeding the food. And you will see a difference in my tanks today compared to them as well. That's how good this is. You, you see a huge improvement in your overall um, improvement rates in your baby shrimp, etc. So stay tuned, right? I'll stop blathering. And we'll get on with the process. As well guys, I want to point out something. I pointed it in, I think it was a Pure Nordic video as well, one of my tanks down here was a little bit slow. 
right? And uh, that was two weeks ago. You guys will have seen it. I've just put a bit of food in there just so you guys can see the change in that tank in that short space of time because this tank had, um, you get a condition called old tank syndrome, but you also get a condition called new tank syndrome. Now, I've just put a piece of food in there literally, what, one or two minutes ago, and you will see there's uh, quite a bit of a, an improvement in the uh, red zebra pintos here, right? And you can see there's like more and more adults coming. They're all very active. This is what you're looking for in a shrimp tank. If you're not seeing this when you put food in, there is an issue, right? And H2O2 can help you fix this problem. All right, so the tank I've chosen to do this in is this one here. And it's simply because these are probably my prized shrimp, right? So there's no better tank for me to show you how good this H2O treatment is. Now, I have to point out as well is that um, there's nothing actually wrong with this tank at the moment, right? The, my shrimp are very active. You can see them here. I'll put up a video up here in the corner of uh, me feeding them yesterday so you can just see the amount of shrimp that are in here. With this amount of um, vegetation, leaves, etc., you're, you're not really going to see all the babies at once anyway. But I will put a video up and you will see it in the top corner up here. And um, the reason I want to show you that, guys, is because... If this didn't work, if it was dangerous for the shrimp, I just wouldn't risk my shrimp's lives doing this, right? So I, I want to prove to you guys that this is a very harmless treatment. So that is what I'm going to do today. We're going to go and we are going to treat this whole tank. Okay, guys, right, this is the part where I want you guys to pay the most attention to, right? Because I don't want you to get this wrong. Right, I will list in the description as well my exact dosing and uh, basically guide you through the exact process here. I'll, I'll do it as a good, very, very good description, basically. And uh, we'll get right into it, I think. All right, so get your tank size. It's very important when you do this that you get your tank size first, right? So you want to calculate your tank size. It's very easy to do. There's lots of calculators online. And basically what you do, guys, right, is you get the, the length of your tank, the width of your tank and the height of your tank and times it. You go online and there's plenty of calculators and it will tell you um, how many litres or gallons your tank is basically, right? And what I like to do as well is I like to think, well, how much, uh, how many litres of uh, gravel did I put in this tank, right? How big is that brick in there? How many litres would that take up, right? And you try and roughly guess the amount of litres to take off your final volume as well, right? So what I also like to do, guys, is when I do my measurements, I like to measure to the water as well. So I like to measure from the gravel to the water and on the inside. I like to do it that way, right? So you, you're trying to get as close a dosage as possible here, right? So for me, I've tested this on all my tanks. Um, I like to take off a percentage and it's always between 5 and 10% of the volume of the actual tank itself, right? And that is leaves me, you with roughly uh, rough uh, water volume. Okay, so... I've written mines down here as well. As I, I, I suggest you guys do this too. You go through, go on your computer, figure your, your sizes, take off your percentage for all this, all the crap that you keep in your tank. Right, write it down. If you're not sure, get someone else that is competent in mathematics to at least check your work. Right? Go online, tell people with the dimensions of your tank, get them to work out your stuff for you. Because right? you, all you're looking for is a cross-reference cross to and know that what you're going to dose is the correct dose, okay? Um, the other thing I want to add as well, guys, is I've done this to the extreme of 2 mil a pair 4.5 uh, uh, litres. And I'm going to tell you why I've chosen that specific number, 4.5 litres, because that is what you Americans will use as a gallon, right? So I want you guys to know 1.5 millilitres is the dose for one gallon. For us that use um, the metric system, it is easy for us to calculate anyway, right? So for us, the metric system users, it's 1.5 milliliters per 4.5 liters. For you Americans, it's 1.5 milliliters per one US gallon, okay? Uh, let's get on to the dosage for this tank. Uh, this one is uh, 55, I think it was, uh, liters that this one holds, right? So you go, you go through, do your calculations. I took out about 10 liters of... Um, volume for the amount of plants I have in here, the substrate, that's like five, six, seven liters of substrate, right? So you have to take off a certain percentage. Um, I've safely done it to 1.5 mil, as I've said before. I have tried two mil guys and I saw a reaction in my shrimp that I really didn't like. So I backed it down by a quarter, right? So uh, when you do your calculations, 
always instead of like um, going up the way you know when you, you do a calculation you go roughly up to the next number don't go up to the next number go roughly to the the lower number round off to the lower number is what I'm saying basically okay uh, so this tank I decided I was uh, there was 45 liters of water in this tank so we are looking at uh, 45 liters divided by 4.5 right that is how you do your mathematic equation here uh, so that leaves us with 10 45 divided by 4.5 liters is 10 right so then you times that by 1.5 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide right and for me that gives me 15 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide for this tank right and the other thing as well guys is i know a lot of you guys uh, you might not be able to source three percent hydrogen peroxide so what you do is is uh, if you can get six percent it doesn't matter your your the percentage of the hydrogen peroxide what matters is if you can cut it right so if you can get six percent hydrogen peroxide you need to cut it with um distilled water or RO water or something like that right and for six percent it's pretty easy all you're doing is uh, putting half the volume you would in with six percent and then adding your RO water to, to make up the volume okay it's pretty easy to cut things like that but let's get right into this I think right so we have uh, what was it 15 mil for this tank here first thing we do guys is very important if you have a sponge filter you do not need to do this but these tanks have power heads in them so I have to stop my shrimp going into them when there's no power right because we're going to turn these power heads off and these are going to be off for one hour all right so let's unplug it boop my plug is right there you can see the shrimp at the back here actually on the filter as well, you see them? There's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Shrimp just in that little picture there, right? So cut yourself a little bit sponge like this. And I'll see if I can do this with one hand. It should be pretty easy. All you're doing is blocking the entrance there, see? And you can see exactly as well why it's important that you do it. See all the shrimp? As soon as I put that sponge in there, that shrimp went on it. Look at the top of that little brick there, you see them? See all the shrimp? Right, so you get your 15 mil or whatever dosage you have. It's important, guys, remember, remember to um, really, I know I'm emphasizing this like a lot, and I know I slur my words and stuff a lot of the time, but please, please, please make sure of your measurements. All right, so I'm going to put 15 mil in here. 15 mil exactly. And what I want to do, guys, is... I'm going to add this to some tank water before I pour in the tank, right? So just take a cup like this, with some tank water, and put your hydrogen peroxide in it. And just give it a little stir. This stuff is so weak, it won't, um, it won't do anything to your hand or your skin. If anything, it may probably disinfect your skin because hydrogen peroxide was pretty commonly used before to disinfect uh, wounds, etc. Stuff like that, right? So you have your hydrogen peroxide like this in your little vessel. And all you're going to do, guys, right, is you're going to try and spread it around the tank as evenly as possible. Right? Try and get some in every part of the tank. This isn't strong enough to affect your clothes, by the way, in case any of you guys were worried about touching your clothes. My face is a little bit close to the microphone. Right, and now what you want to do is... Grab a utensil, anything you can, and just gently swirl the water. You want this water to move a little bit. All right, you want to get in all the nooks and crannies. Right, get your hand in there, whatever utensil you want. Give it a swirl. And I can see all these leaves, etc., all moving. Look at all the little blue bolts and stuff here. You see all the babies? Babies everywhere. I love this. It is one of the best things I've ever figured out how to use was hydrogen peroxide in a shrimp tank. So give it a swirl like this. And from here on, guys, you just have to be patient. Right, so get your timer and stick it on for one hour. And the reason for that, guys, is because it will take at least an hour for this uh, hydrogen peroxide to do its job. It's basically going to uh, sterilize the water a little bit. It's going to reduce your nitrates. It's going to reduce the ammonia. This is an absolutely awesome tool 
for, um, like I said before, if you have issues where, I call it new tank syndrome, where the tank is slightly overfed and you get different uh, wrong types of bacteria in the tank. This is an absolutely awesome treatment for this as well. Uh, so I'll be back in an hour, we'll switch the filter back on, and you will see the shrimp. Okay, while we wait, I thought it would be a good um, idea to address the issues a lot of you guys will ask me in the comment questions. In the comment questions, in the comment section below. Um, does this affect your uh, bacteria, your cycle? It doesn't because uh, we've actually isolated our uh, filter. This is why I was turning off the filter. Um, I probably didn't mention that. Maybe I should be a little bit more clearer on things when I do them. So this is why you, it's important that you turn off your filter. You've got to isolate the bacteria inside your inside the actual sponge in the, in the media, etc. I know some guys that have done this uh, with no ill effect, with the filter still running, but I don't completely trust it uh, that well enough yet, especially when it's working so well for me, the way I'm doing it right now, right? So that is what I want to do. Uh, the other things that you will ask me is, uh, how will you see if it's actually done anything, right? So in a lot of the tanks, I'm not sure this will come out on camera either. I did notice over here. Um, I did this tank yesterday. If you can see the string algae here, guys, you can probably see that it's white. Right, so this is what happens to string algae. With that dosage i just shown you, right, you, you will see uh, most of the string algae will die off. Right, you might take one or two doses to do this as well, but eventually your string algae will die off. You come to this tank here. I don't have any string algae at all, nothing. Up the top tank, no string algae at all either. But you can see I have tons of biofilm, right? So you have to remember that your biofilm might take a hit, but you are going to add uh, your own bacteria source back in. That can be anything. That could be pure nodics, neutrodust, any of that kind of stuff, bacteria AE, um, any kind of bacterial supplement will add biofilm back into your tank. That's what you're looking for. Right, so I used to have it quite bad in here as well. This big tank. Not a single strand of string algae anywhere. I can't see a, even one single piece has removed it so well. You can see on this filter here, um, you can see some of the reaction to the uh, hydrogen peroxide and some of the uh, algae. You can just see at the very top there. See it's a little bit white. This is what happens to it. You probably noticed it over here in that tank as well. Uh, the general things that you will notice about your shrimp as well is they will have an increased vigor like you've never seen before. Like this is normally when you have a tank that's uh, suffering from something, the shrimp hide. But then all of a sudden, after you do this kind of treatment, you will see the shrimp like more actively swimming around. They will feed better as well. It's very noticeable that they feed much, much better after doing this treatment. Uh, the other question I know you guys will ask for sure is, um, will my shrimp suffer while the filter's not on? You know, will they have enough oxygen, etc.? Well, as I said already, the... H2O2, when it interacts with um, organics, the atom is split and you get oxygen. You actually get pure oxygen, right? So don't worry about your shrimp not being able to breathe, etc. If anything, um, your oxygen levels will be much higher than normal. Okay, so don't worry about that kind of stuff. This treatment works absolutely fantastic. Come on, fat man, ring so we can go over here and finish this video. Woohoo! One second, guys. Looking good, no dead shrimp, plenty of active shrimp. I think this is probably down to um, the oxygen increase in the water in the top there. You see on top of that brick, count the black specks, that is baby shrimp. All right, so let's finish this video. Let's go over here. You need to have a look at the beautiful shrimp on the filters here first. <laughs> right, you need to turn, take your little plug little plug that we had for a filter. You turn your filter back on. You see the water moving is now back on. It has been one hour exactly since we did this. And everything's looking great. You see the little baby shrimp swimming through the centre there? So give this a try guys. If you're competent in your abilities to measure things. I'm just going to go quickly over the dose again. This was 3% hydrogen peroxide. Uh, 1.5 milliliters per 4.5 liters okay or for you guys in the US that's 1.5 milliliters per US gallon okay give it a go see the results look at all these babies here isn't it amazing you see them all swimming around like this 
all right so there is today's video thank you for watching guys if you have if you've actually done this before let other people know in the comment section how well it's worked for you if it's cured diseases removed algae helped your tanks just become more vigorous let everybody know how good this really is thank you for watching guys if you haven't subscribed already do so hit that bell notification i'll catch you in the next one thanks for watching happy shrimp keeping thank you h2o thank you Mark. <laughs> Thank you.